Today we're going to learn how to use bounding box node in geometry nodes and how to use it to calculate the height of any object or a collection of objects. So let's see. Okay, first of all, what is a bounding box? A bounding box, let me show you an example with a monkey. When we are in object mode and we go to object in viewport display and activate this, this is the bounding box. It's just like an invisible box where our object fits inside. And the box shows you the limits of the object. And if we distort this object, the bounding box will try to update, as you can see here. Okay, so this is the bounding box. And now we want to recreate this bounding box in geometry node. For example, to get the height of any object or a collection of objects. So, to do this, what I'm going to do is to use this object as example. Let's bring back the cube to use geometry nodes. Go here, create a new profile. I'm going to close this. And we want the bounding box of this object, right? So, let's use this object as information with object info. We can delete this and connect it here. And now we need to select the Susan. We have a copy of this. Okay, so to get the bounding box of this object, the only thing we have to do is to use bounding box node, as simple as that. And now when we add it, we have the bounding box, but with a mesh of this object. Now, if we try to move this or rotate it, nothing happens. The bounding box stays the same. However, if you select relative, now when we select the Susan, let me select Susan. If I try to rotate the Susan, look, the bounding box updates based in the rotation and also based in the position. But the important thing is based in the maximum point from the bottom to the top, as you can see. Okay, so let's come back here. I'm going to log 70 nodes. And now, first of all, what I want is to convert this box in transparent to see what we have inside. So let's use mesh to curve and then curve to mesh to give a mesh to the lines. I'm going to select something like 0 0.005 and now we can see better the object inside. By the way, if you want to rotate the object in any direction, just press twice R. If you press one, you only move it in one axis and if you press twice, you can move it like this. Okay, so now that we have the bounding box, what we can do is to, let me add a note here, and now what I want is to get the height of this bounding box. So basically, this distance. How I can do this? To do this, what we can do is to use here minimum and maximum. So what is minimum and maximum? Minimum and maximum. So minimum is this point. Is the point that is in all the axes in negative. So minus x, y, and z. So this point is minimum. And this point, the opposite, is maximum. So these two sockets, these two outputs, are just vectors. And remember that maximum are the three axes in positive. So it's like this axis, this axis, and this axis. So the end is this position. And this one are the negative axis. This one, this one, and this one. So we have a vector like that. Okay, so to get the height, we want this. What we can do, if we know the minimum and maximum based 
from the center, we can get the z, for example, the minimum z that will be from here this vector. This is the minimum z, and we can get from here the maximum z. And with the maximum z and minimum z, we can do an operation of subtracting one vector from another to get like this vector with this vector. So if we subtract minimum z, so this vector, we subtract it with maximum z, then what we get is the distance between this and this because it's like if we reverse this and we have something like this and this. If you don't know what happens when we subtract vectors, I recommend you to watch this tutorial to understand it better. So, okay, we need to subtract one z from another z. So, here what we have to do is to use vector math and subtract the maximum from the minimum. And now, here, we need to get only the z. So, let's use separate, and in this value, we have this, from here to here, the result. So, we can convert this to a text. Or you can use this information for any other operation that you have in your mind. But let's convert this to a text. So, let's use value to string. And let's convert this to a string to curve. And let's, let's use join geometry. We can see the process of this. I think now the text is, where is the text? Let me hide this for a moment. The text, of course, if it's not connected, we cannot see it. It's there too. So let's give fill curve. And now we can see the text. What we can do is to add this text. First of all, I want to center this text. So let's select center and middle. Now, what I want is that this number is here, in this phase, in the middle. So, how I can do that? There is a lot of ways to do that. But one faster way to do it is to convert this bounding box in points. So we add a point in the middle of the face, and then we convert this point to this number as instance. So to do this, what I'm going to do, if this is the text, let me disconnect this for now. What I want to do is to convert this box okay to points so we need to use mesh to points and thanks to this now we have points in the vertex but what i want is points in the faces in the middle so i'm going to select here faces and now we have this point remember the one of the top so the only thing I have to do is to get only this one and delete all the others. So we need to do a selection here. Let's use selection to get equal and we're going to use index because we want to get the index of the points. And now let's just click here to see which point is the point before, this one. So let's see which one is. Okay, the number two. So now we have only selected this point. And now that we have this point, what we can do is to convert this point with instance on points. And as instance, use this text. So let's move this here and connect it here. So now we have the text at the top 
of the box. We cannot see the box, so let's join all together. Bam! And now we have the number there. Perfect. If you want to see the object, what we can do is to let me make a copy of this and add it here. So, no, actually, sorry, what I have to do is just to show again the Susan. So now we have the Susan. As you can see, I can move it, I can rotate it, and the number is always there. I want to rotate this number and make it a bit higher, so the only thing I have to do is to add set position. I can do it here or here, however you want. I'm going to do it here and I'm going to make it higher. So I'm going to add some meters here, something like this. And let's rotate it. So what you can do is to rotate it manually, for example, in this axis, 90 degrees. But if you want the text always facing the camera, so let's add a camera. Let's set the camera to this view. And now, if I want to move the camera to rotate it, and I want the text to face always the camera, what I have to do is to connect in rotation of the instance of the text, the camera information. So let's bring the object info, select the camera, and connect rotation with rotation. And now, if I try to move the camera, you will notice that the text always is facing the camera. Perfect. So let me add some notes here. Okay, so we have this. And now what I want is that this number shows the height. So remember, to show the height, the only thing we have to do is to connect here in valid string. Remember the Z. So let's move it here. And let's connect here the Z. Remember the Z have the information of subtracting max to minimum. So if I connect Z here, now it tells me how much is this. But this is not exactly because we need to activate decimals. And now if I add two decimals, it will tell me always the height of this. So if I try to rotate this, you will see that always the number updates. Even so, if I scale the object. If you want to add meters here, what you can do is to go, let's do a group here with Ctrl G. And if we want to add meters, we need to add here, join a string. And we are going to connect this here. And we need to use another string and connect it here. So now, Whatever I write here, like subscribe, is going to appear here. If you write something here, it will be the space. But if you just press space and click out, it will give you a space. So let's write M of meters. And now we have the number and meters. Let's come back to geometry nodes, pressing tab or pressing here. And remember that this is the text. So with this setup, looks complicated, but actually it's not. Remember that this is just to get the point. This is the text. So we use the point to convert it in an instance with the text. And we use this information to get the Z to convert the text to the real number. And this is just to show the transparent cage box. I add some materials to see the difference between the bounding box, the object and the text. As you can see, if we go to the camera, remember, and I try to move the camera, 
the text always is facing the camera and we can see the bounding box reacting in real time. And if you want to make the text smaller, I just connect in the text with this, I just connect it here, so we can control the size of the text from here. And remember the position, I just move it here because I think it's easier. Now let's see how we can apply this to a collection. Now if you want to have a lot of objects inside a bounding box, the only thing we have to do is to create a new collection. Let's go there, right click, new collection. Let's move the Susan inside the new collection. Let's make a copy of this. So we have different objects inside this collection. You can have as many objects as you want. Now let's come back to Geometry Nodes. And the only thing we have to do is to change the star. Because right now it's applying the bounding box to a single object. So let's delete this and let's use Collection Info. Let's select the collection, this one, and connect it here. If you leave it like that, what is happening is that it's using for each object, for each instance inside this collection, is applying its own bounding box. If you don't want that, then what we want is to have all the objects inside a bounding box. The only thing you have to do is to realize this instance to geometry. And now we get this result. We have a bounding box for all the objects. And if we move any object, as you can see, is reacting to the objects that we have inside. And you can apply as many objects as you want. Remember that the bounding box will use the geometry that is more far from the center. So right now this one doesn't matter too much as you can see, but this one matters to push this or this one. But if I move this one here, now this one is the one that matters to define, for example, this distance. And if you want to get, because now we are showing the height, so the Z, if you want to get, for example, this distance or this distance, the only thing you have to do instead of using Z is using Y or X. So right now we are showing X and I think, let me see, yes, this one is the longest, so this number is X. And this one is Y and this one is Z. But if you want to have the three at the same time, remember that you need to change the position of the points with this. So you can select other parts to show the distance. I'm going to do it really fast and I'm going to leave this project in my pattern if you want it. Okay, so basically what I did is to group what I showed you by changing the input and the position of each point using edges to add it there. So this is X, this is Z, and this is Y. And remember, if I press camera, I go to camera view and I try to move this the numbers are always facing the camera. So in my pattern, you will have the first project with a single object and the project with this collection. So I hope you learned something new and if you like this video, please give a like, subscribe and remember you can donate this project and many more on my pattern. And see you in the next tutorial.